I thought it would be a good idea now that we've seen the definition of a PDA, let's revisit the example we had and I'm going to define it more formally now. So suppose let's consider PDA P or we're going to have Q. Remember the set of states, the input symbols, our stack alphabet or stack symbols, transition function, the start state, the start symbol of the stack, and of course our set of final states. We're going to define it like this. Where Q is going to be, there's going to be exactly three states, Q0, Q1, Q2. If you've seen our design intuition here, this should match up with having three phases, right? So just as a reminder, we're going to be considering this language. 0 to the n, 1 to the n, such that n is greater or equal to 0. So our input symbols are going to be 0, 1. So we've got 0 or 1. Our tape alphabet is going to be Z0 or X. We're going to have Q0 is the start state. I kind of just made it easy enough for us to see right there, right? And Z0 is the start symbol. But I'm going to define the set of final states that only contain Q2. This is going to correspond to our third phase in our previous example, when we had the kind of our game plan for how we would design the PDA. So now that I've defined those, I need to actually give you a definition of delta, the transition function. So I'm going to do it formally, and then I'm going to show you how we can represent this using a transition diagram. So this is going to be what we call a generalized transition diagram, because we also have to encapsulate the behavior of the stack, among other things. So next, we're going to talk about what delta is. So I'm going to break it down in terms of the phases that we had. Hopefully that's going to be clear to everybody. I'm going to break it down into the phases. So at the start, if a zero is read, we push, we push one X on to the stack. So what is this going to look like when we actually use the triples? So we have delta, we're at the start state, right? We're going to have it where if I, if I see a zero, I'm going to want to gobble up it like a hungry, hungry hippo. I want to gobble that sucker up. And if there is at the top of the stack the start symbol, well, what did we do, right? What did we do? We pushed an X, right, onto the stack. So if we look at the set of pairs that we will have, it says that it's going to stay in Q0. And what the stack's going to look like is we're going to push X onto the stack, like this. So just note that this is telling me how I'm modifying the top of the stack. So there's another possibility that can happen, right, when I'm reading the zeros. What else can happen? So remember, let's, let me just doodle a little stack here. So remember, it starts off with Z0 right here. So this accounts for the case that if I consume a zero, like a hungry, hungry hippo, when I consume the zero, when the top of the stack is Z0, it pushes an X. What if I run into, what if I have another zero? What would the top of the stack look like then? What's the top of the stack going to be in that case? Is it Z0? It's not going to be Z0 anymore, right? So we need to account for the case when the top of the stack, when we take a peek at it, we take a peek at the top of the stack, it's going to be an X. 
So when we have that happen, what should happen? Okay, well, gobble up the zero, push an X, right? But we stay in Q zero. So the top of the stack is an X, I'm going to push an X. So notice that this will actually account for the first phase. Does everybody see that? So do you notice that there's no other described transitions here on one, right? So you might ask, Dan, what happens in those cases? It's just like when we talked about with NFAs or epsilon NFAs. Those are when those threads will just die, quote unquote. They get killed. So then you might ask, how do you go from phase one to phase two? Remember, phase one is where we read the zeros and we pop, push, we push X's. I was about to say pop, we push the X's. But we need to move to the next phase. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to need to consider if that happens. So that's what's going to be this next part. Then, then the PDA may take an epsilon move to Q1. And when it's in Q1, that's when we can start reading the ones, right? Think of them as the different phases. So now I need to describe these epsilon moves. So now remember, on an epsilon move, you don't consume a symbol, right? So we have delta, Q0. So we're still in Q0, right? But remember, now the, the way we, we process, now it depends on both the state and what the top of the stack looks like. So we need to account for two cases, right? Because the stack might look differently for two possibilities, right? Because technically speaking, the empty string is a part of this language, right? It could be zero zeros and zero ones, right? Which that's the empty string. So I need to make sure I account for that as well, because that means that the start, that means the start symbol has to be present on the top of the stack in that case. Do you know, I'll, I'll let you think about what would happen if I require that there's at least one zero and at least one one. So in this case, it should go straight to Q1 without gobbling up a symbol. And the top of the stack remains Q0. Not Q0, Z0. Like I said, even I understand that they are closely linked at this stage now. So now I have Q0, epsilon, and now it might be an X at the top of the stack. So in this case, we don't want to, we're not touching the top of the stack. We want to keep it the same, right? So notice that now we can be in state Q1. Naturally, when you're in Q1, we want to make sure that now we got to do what? What do we have to do, guys? What do we have to do, everybody? Are we pushing at this stage, or what are we doing? It's popping time. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so next, Next, X's may have been pushed so we're going to pop the stack on each one. And I mean a one, like the number, <laughs> the number that is a symbol in our case, <laughs> not one like it's there's only one of them. Okay. <laughs> So what is this going to look like then? So we're going to be in state Q1, right? If it, it, it reads, it, it's going to gobble up a one. If it does, it has to be that the top of the stack has an X on it, right? And if that's the case, remember we said, if you want to pop the stack, the top of the, you'd change the top of the stack to be epsilon, the empty string. So this will do, it's time. it does the popping, <laughs> does the pop, popping, popping, popping. <laughs> so finally, now we have to actually have the check to see that we've indeed correctly 
have equal numbers of zeros and ones, and based on the way we structured these transitions, it will be the case that the zeros come before the ones. That's one subtle detail here. Is finally we need to make sure we can check. We do the final check. I put some more details in the notes, but the final check is that we need to have an epsilon move that takes us from Q1 to Q2. So I'm going to use this opportunity to be the check, the last phase. So if I can get into the last phase, then we're done, right? Because I said we'd accept if we're in that phase, right? If we don't, if we're, however, if our thread gets killed before we can get over there, then we don't, certainly can't accept, right? So we're going to have it where it's in Q1. We're going to make an epsilon move. If the top of the stack is Z0, right? If we have no more X's, then the, the top of the stack will be the start symbol, right? But in that case, it will be Q2, and it won't mutate the stack. Just keeps that Z0. That zero is looking a little too delty for me, uh, or belta. It's, it's looking a little sketchy. So I don't say belta, that's not really a letter. <laughs> It's somewhere between a belch and delta. It's quite a transition of flatulence, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, so notice that these, these, uh, this actually defines the transition function. For all others, all others, they're going to be empty. So if you're wondering where all the other triples are, they're all empty. They're going to result in empty sets. So, you might ask, Dan, is there a nice, convenient way for me to describe this without having to do all of this triples business with the pairs and sets? Yes, of course there is. There's a generalized transition diagram, which now I'm going to show you how that works. So we can draw, we can draw a generalized transition diagram so just if you're wondering what the transition table would look like it's going to be one of, so each one of these slots in your table would be a listing of these pairs if it doesn't have any pairs meaning that for any one of these I didn't give you a an on empty set they're all going to be empty is that clear so I'm going to focus instead on the transition diagram So this will help us understand how transitions work. So how is it going to work? We're going to have nodes or vertices that are the states of the PDA. Of the PDA. We're going to have arrows just like we had before. But we're going to have to have them have a very specific form. So I'm going to start off with the one that points to the start state. Like with an, with an epsilon NFA. For the start state. Usually people put the word start above the arrow, but it's not necessary all the time. I generally do it just to make it a little clear that it's not it, not anything else. And of course, we have the doubly circled, doubly circled states are final, so they're final or accepting states. Now you'll notice really quickly that I didn't actually say anything about how a PDA accepts input. We just sort of just presume it at this stage. Um, I'll get into more detail about this when we get there. But for you, for our purposes, just imagine that when it finishes consuming the input, if it's in a final state, it, it, it's accepting. But I'll get into more detail about how that works here in a moment. And with the PDA, there's a lot of different ways we could talk about accepting and rejecting. I'll stick to one. 
at least for now. <laughs> so we're going to have arcs, which are transitions of the PDA. So we're going to have directed edges. So I'm going to label them with a very specific form. Each arc is labeled. It's going to have this particular form. It's going to be A. We're going to have X with a slash. And instead of this being A, let's make this alpha. So you might ask what A is. This is the input red. X is the old top of the stack. And alpha is the new top of the stack. So this is what you're replacing with. So So just to be very clear, what I mean by this is that if you see something like this, delta P A X, it contains it contains pair Q alpha. And this is where if you're going from state P to state Q. So one thing I need to be careful about, and I'll mention this as an aside, is that normally we're going to presume that the start symbol is already on the stack. If ever it's unclear to your reader, please specify what the start symbol is. For example, some people define PDAs where the, there is no start symbol. Instead, it always starts off with an empty stack. Some people define it like that. We won't here. So just always assume that Z0 is always the start symbol, and it's at the and so it's going to be on the stack at the beginning. That's what we're going to presume. So let's now draw out what one of these transition diagrams would look like. OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come up with our generalized transition diagram. Now, remember, we had three states, right? We had three states. There are three states. I'm losing my notes. <laughs> That's how excited I am. So we had three states, right? We had Q0, Q1, and we had Q2. Q2 was a final state, so I'm going to double circle it. Q0 is the start state, so I'm going to indicate that quite clearly. And do you remember, just before I get too ahead of myself, I'm going to put in those epsilon moves. So remember, I can go from Q0 to Q1 on epsilon, so on an epsilon move, if the old top of the stack is Z0, and then and I replace it with itself, right? I could do that. Likewise, I could do something quite similar, where I see the top of the stack is X, I replace it with X. And then also we had this one where after we made sure there's no more X's left, to get over to Q2 requires that Z0 is on the top of the stack, right? And we just, we don't change it. So these are our transitions to get from Q0 to Q2. So notice that to get over to Q2, do you notice that I could actually just take epsilon moves to get over here without actually consuming anything? Do you notice that? So it's going to be really important when we think about this PDA that it has to compute, it has to consume the entire input. It has to gobble that sucker up. So we had some transitions that occur among Q0, Q1 that stay within their same state. Remember, we had it where we push the push our the zeros, but every time I have a zero. I'm actually going to replace that top of the stack with an X. So the top of the stack becomes, so it's the old top, new top. If I see a zero, 
If I see an X at the top of the stack, I replace that with two X's. So now X is the top of the stack. So in both cases, X becomes the top of the stack if I encounter a zero. Then I can move on over here. In either case, keep in mind, notice that this is not prohibitive of the idea that you can go over to here. Remember, you can just freely go here on an epsilon move. That's the non-deterministic nature of this machine. Does everybody understand that? So I can't, I can just, there's nothing stopping the machine from going into this state as one of the pairs. With the exception, that as long as the top of the stack looks like, has one of these two forms, meaning it's Z0 or X, which in either case it can happen, right? What matters here is that when it's done consuming all of the input, it's over here. That's the part that really matters. So when we're in Q1, what happens in Q1? Well, reads, reads a one, it does what? It's popping time. It pops, right? So on seeing an X, it pops. And here is our generalized transition diagram for our PDA P. So this PDA will recognize, so you can actually sit down and prove this, but uh, what you can do is, uh, is you can take a look at this and notice that it actually recognizes the language that we were desiring before, namely that 0 to the n, 1 to the n, such that n is greater or equal to 0. So it does indeed recognize this language.